This word is polymorph. Polymorphs are crystals of the same compound, but where the parts, the molecules in the crystal are arranged in a different way. So chemically, they're identical, but usually, not always, they're salts. And the way that the positive and the negatively charged ions fit together in the crystal structure is different. It's particularly common with pharmaceutical compounds because pharmaceutical compounds tend to be quite complicated molecules. So they don't fit together very well in the crystal. They're not like the round sodium and chloride ions in sodium chloride. So why does it matter? Why are people interested in polymorphs? The problem is that different polymorphs of the same compound often have different solubilities, say in water or in acid. So if you imagine you take a pharmaceutical compound as a pill, you swallow it. If it's one polymorph, it will dissolve much more quickly in your stomach than another one. So your dose would be different. So in the pharmaceutical industry, it's very important that you always produce the same polymorph of the compound that you're going to sell as a pharmaceutical product. The difficulty is that when you have something crystallizing, the crystallization begins often with a tiny crystal that starts as a nucleus that sets everything else off. Once something decides to crystallize in a polymorph, nearly the whole batch will go in that way. And there are several stories about factories that are making a polymorph of a particular pharmaceutical and a different factory that is getting the wrong polymorph. Somebody comes from that factory to the other one and says, show me how to do it. And suddenly, the factory that could do it gets the wrong polymorph too, because the visitor has some microcrystals or whatever in his clothes, his hair or whatever. So understanding how things crystallize is really quite an important part of chemistry, especially when you're trying to make pharmaceutical products. I think, in fact, that many, if not most, pharmaceutical compounds have more than one polymorph. Sometimes it's really good because you can patent one polymorph, and then when the patent's beginning to run out, you can patent another one which somehow is more effective, so the lifetime of your patent continues. But also, I read an article once which says the number of polymorphs on a compound really depends on the amount of money you spend studying it. And the longer you study it, the more polymorphs you can find. Because these are complicated compounds, and small changes in the crystallization procedure can change the polymorph. I've heard of things called allotropes. How is an allotrope different from a polymorph? An allotrope is a form of an element, graphite and diamond, oxygen and ozone. In those cases, the molecules have the atoms bonded together in different ways. In a polymorph, or in polymorphs, the way that the atoms are bonded together in the molecule or ions are identical. It's just the way that they're stacked up that is different. And the difference in solubility may not be very great, but if one thing is twice as soluble as another, when you eat it, you'll get twice as big a dose. And twice as big a dose is quite serious.